Welcome back to our channel. It's Maria Piva, and in this episode, we will be discussing environmental racism at play in a city called Lafayette, Louisiana. Now, Lafayette, Louisiana is roughly two hours west of New Orleans, and has low-key been in the media recently because of a sketchy water crisis that has affected its inhabitants. What makes this environmental racism, you might ask? Well, we'll get into that, but before I discuss how this water crisis is rooted by systemic racism, I should give you a brief background on the area. It all began in the 17th century when America was being colonized by white European settlers. This immigration over essentially pushed Native Americans to move more to the west, one area in particular being current day Louisiana, which as a result caused Louisiana to have a large amount of Native American tribes spread throughout its entirety, as shown in this picture. But as we all know, the treatment of Native Americans is not at all like how it was explained when we were in the first grade. In fact, it is much more complex than good guy Christopher Columbus making friends with the Native Americans. Their treatment as less than human is only further emphasized when we take a look at their history in the US. In fact, according to the Library of Congress, Native Americans were even fully considered citizens until the Snyder Act was passed in 1924. Even with this act, Native Americans suffered in the United States. In fact, they were still referred to as Indians. Funnily enough though, despite them being considered citizens, they were not permitted the right to vote, meaning that Native Americans were essentially hushed when it came to government participation. This is no different from the situation today that is occurring in Lafayette, Louisiana. Native Americans are being plighted by water contamination and it's taking a toll on their health. According to Kendra Chamberlain, a journalist for the medium, Lafayette's drinking water supply is contaminated with dangerous industrial chemicals like benzene, lead, and acetone, the same chemicals that are known to be highly toxic to people. Things are looking so grim, in fact, that Louisiana's Department of Environmental Quality went to take a look at the water source. What they found was that lead was present in 160 parts per billion. Now, that might not seem terrible, only 160 per billion, when, but when we're dealing with chemicals as toxic as these, the accepted value should be much lower. For lead, the safe value is only 15 parts per billion. And by having such high value of these chemicals, the inhabitants are facing health problems. Benzene, according to cancer.org, is known to increase the risk of having leukemia. And lead is especially dangerous to young children as it targets the developing nervous system. If it isn't enough that not only is their health is on the line, but their beliefs as well. In an article by Waging Nonviolence, the Author She and Moore describes how water is sacred to Native Americans, the same water that is being contaminated by carcinogens. That's absurd that chemicals like these are even in their water, wouldn't you agree? And the reason there are toxic chemicals in their water source is because of an old Union Pacific rail yard. The rail yard itself is unsurprisingly full of chemicals. These chemicals then seep into the soil and into an aquifer not even 40 feet below. The real problem is that this isn't the first time this rail yard has been under fire. But what's even more threatening is that nothing is being done, and residents want to know why neither the local or state government is doing anything to fix this issue. Essentially, this problem is being ignored by people with the power to fix it. Outside of the government, there are groups such as La et la Vie, which translates to Water is Life. This group continues to fight for keeping water sources clean and undisturbed. But the reason that this problem is not being taken seriously is because it is Native Americans who are being affected by this issue. Unfortunately, under our government system, Native American rights and needs are often ignored. Environmental racism allows large companies to burden these groups of people with hazards such as chemical waste without having any repercussion. As such, this issue in Lafayette, Louisiana is a prime example of how environmental racism is affecting minorities. Sadly, this is not the only group of Native Americans being troubled by environmental racism. There are plenty of others, such as those in the Western United States or those in New Orleans. This is why it's so essential to educate ourselves on issues such as these so that we may advocate for change. Hopefully, with enough support, we can cause a change and see greater interest in protecting minority rights by the government. I hope that you continue to search for these injustices and bring them to light so that incidents like these are fixed before they even begin. Hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.